Hello everybody, Interinteri back again with another video and today's video guys is going to be about exactly like the title is saying why does Djokovic has so much troubles against Stan Wawrinka especially in slams yeah guys, why is this that Djokovic has so much difficulties against Stan Wawrinka not that Stan Wawrinka is a bad player absolutely not because we all know that he has tremendous, tremendous skills but if you compare Djokovic with Rafa Nadal and Federer, Rafa Nadal and Federer doesn't have amount of difficulties like Djokovic has against Wawrinka and against Wawrinka. Not Federer, not Nadal. Not that Federer and Nadal never has lost to Wawrinka, they have lost of course, uh, but Djokovic has lost more, especially Djokovic has lost uh, in slams more and, and in, in a couple of Grand Slam finals. I think the head-to-head -head between Federer and Wawrinka is 23-3, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the head-to-head -head in slams, which is the most important st stats, uh, it is 7-1 to Federer. So the only match that, Jok that Wawrinka has defeated Federer was in that 2015 quarter-final of uh, French Open. The, that year that uh, Wawrinka won that title in Paris uh, and defeated Djokovic in the final there. And uh, the head-to-head -head between Wawrinka and Nadal is, uh, I think, 18-3 to Rafa Nadal, if I'm not mistaken. And in the slams, it is 3-1 uh, to Nadal. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, and the only time that, Nad that Wawrinka has defeated Nadal in a slam match was in that Australian Open final 2014, where Nadal got injured after the first set. So... Uh, and Federer, like I said, 7-1. Federer defeated Romica in all the slams. Australian Open, Wimbledon, French Open, US Open. And then we have Djokovic. It, somebody maybe says, but hello, Djokovic is not... He has great head-to-head -head stats against Romica. Yeah, he has. 19-5, I believe it is, to Djokovic. But... Uh, you have to look that three of those victories that Vavrika has against Djokovic, they are in the slams, three. Uh, and two of them are in finals. So, and on and the head-to-head -head in the Grand Slam matches between the Stan and Novak, it is pretty even, guys. It is 4-3 to Novak. And three of those matches that Novak has won, uh, it is uh, at, it, it, it has been five set battles. So, it is... That is proof that Novak has very, very difficulties against Stan Wawrinka. And why, why is this? I, I have wondered. It has to be with the matchup, guys, of course. It has to be with the matchup first. And the other... And, and, and the other reason is... Uh, Djokovic, uh, with the matchup, of course, how you, how, you, how you handle Djokovic. And Wawrinka... He's a very, very unpredictable tennis player, like we all know. He's so inconsistent. He, he reminds me about Marat Safin. Marat Safin was like that as well when he played. The, the hard hit Russian player who won two, two Grand Slam titles in his career. Uh, he reminds me of Marat Safin. Marat Safin was very, very unpredictable as well. He, he barely won any matches throughout, throughout the season. He won matches, of course, but you know what I mean. He was so he was getting upset on the first and second round very, very often in his career. But when he find a great week or or, or find the two great weeks in a slam, and he went deep, when he played a couple of Grand Slam finals, he was not he was tough. He was tough to beat. He defeated Roger Federer one time in, in the like we all know in that Australian Open semi final two thousand. 2005 and he defeated also if I'm not mistaken uh, Pistol Pete one time in a US Open final in 2000 so and he has also lost a, a, a solo Open final 2004 against Federer so all in all Safin played three Grand Slam finals and won two of them so and Wawrinka is reminding me like Safin as well but better but better because he has achieved more uh, at least in the, uh, he has won one more Grand Slam than Safin. But, but uh, Wawrinka has played four Grand Slam finals and he has won three of them. So he's a very, very tough ma match player. He's a, he's a big match player, uh, Wawrinka. So, and Novak, when he, when he faces Wawrinka, 
Uh, Wawrinka has abilities to take time away from Novak. But Wawrinka is a shot maker. And Novak and Wawrinka, when they have played each other, they have played most times quarterfinals, semifinals or finals or, or, the, or the fourth round. Uh, so they have not faced each other so many times in the first or second round. It is there where Wawrinka is as most vulnerable, the first couple of matches. Be, be fine, before he finds his rhythm and things like that, before he finds that clean hit with his ground strokes. But when Ravrika goes deep, and especially when he faces Novak, because Novak, guys, we have to we have to realize one thing: Novak doesn't have weapons. He has weapons, of course. He's full of weapons, but he doesn't have a specific huge weapon like Roger Federer Nadal has. And Roger Federer Nadal. And Roger Federer and Nadal, with those huge weapons, they hurt his opponents. For example, Rogers and and, and, Naf, and Rafa's forehands are better than and are better than uh, uh, Djokovic's forehands. And the, I believe that one of one of the most important shots in tennis is forehand together with the, with the serve. If you have a good forehand and good and good good serve, you will do a big damage in tennis. And th that is why Federer has done so much big damage in tennis because his two biggest weapons are forehand and serve. And Djokovic doesn't have, yeah, yeah, we know Djokovic has a superb backhand. He has better backhand than both Federer and Nadal. Djokovic has superb f uh, returns. Yes, we know that. Probably the greatest serve return of all time. But you can you cannot do as much of a damage with your for with your backhand and with your and with your returns like you do with your forehand and with your serve. That is my opinion. I I, I don't know if you guys uh, uh, agree. And when Djokovic faces. A dangerous player like Vavrinka in deep rounds in slams, who is a big match player and who is tough mentally as well. And Djokovic, he's not a, as grudge, he's not as great shot maker as Federer and Nadal is, especially not as Federer, absolutely not. But maybe even not, Rafa is a slightly better shot maker than Djokovic. What is Djokovic living on, guys? Djokovic lives on consistency. Great cardio, very fast and quick on the court, and very very tough mentally. Very very special, especially when the moments right when when the uh, when the matches gets close and when the matches gets even and where where the matches goes into a fifth time, or uh, when the matches goes on fifth fifth set. These four things that Djokovic lives on, guys. These were four things that has made Djokovic so so successful. Consistency, great cardio, great athlete. He he moves like a like a tiger on, on the court, and a mental terminator, guys. Those four, four things that Djokovic lives on, and when he faces Stan Wawrinka, Stan Wawrinka matches up superb with all these four things. Stan Wawrinka, when he goes deep, he can be consistent from the baseline. He can handle Djokovic from the baseline, which is not many players who can do. Because we all know that Djokovic, he, 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 is, a, he is a baseline grinder, guys. Let's, let's, be, let, let's be honest here. Djokovic is not a player that blows his, his opponents out from the court. He is not that kind of player, guys, like Feder can do. And sometimes like Nadal can do as well. Djokovic is not let that kind of player like Federer and Rafa that he that he blows his opponents out from the court. No, he doesn't do that, guys. Titan time to time, uh, uh, yes, but not on a regular basis. No, guys, he doesn't do that. Like I said, what does Djokovic live on? Consistency, great cardio, great movement. He 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 moves like a cat on the court. He's pre probably the best. Ten, the best player on the court when it comes to movements and a terminator mentally guys so these four things but but when Stan faces him Stan matches up well with all these four things first of all at least like I said on the deeper rounds because Stan is on the cup on the first rounds he's very vulnerable that that's why we have seen Stan being upset so many times on the on, the first couple of rounds, but if if he survives the first week, then he is very very dangerous, dangerous, especially against Djokovic because he can match up great with with Djokovic's um, uh, skill set. He can really match up great. He can match Djokovic from the baseline. He really can. He has heavy ground strokes. He deep. He hits hard. He hits powerful with it both forehand and backhand. 
he can match up. He can match match up with him great from the baseline. Uh, he's a pretty solid mover, Stan Wawrinka. He's not a great mover. Of course, he's not as great mover as Djokovic is, but he's a solid mover. He is. Uh, he has good good cardio. Not ex not exceptional good cardio, but he has good cardio. And the third, and that this is more, maybe the most important why he uh, is, has been successful against Djokovic in the Grand Slams. He has defeated him in two Grand Slam finals. And in, in all Stan Wawrinka's three Grand Slam titles that he has, he has defeated Djokovic in all of them. Also, Lopo 2014, the fourth round, an epic one in five sets. It was a really, really slugfest, that one. In that fourth round, I believe that Stan won that fourth round match against, against Novak in that Oslo Open fourth round 9-7, the last set, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Then he defeated him in French Open 2015 final, like we all know, in four sets. And then the 2016 US Open final in four sets. The most important thing that maybe Stan has that, that matches Djokovic so well with is his mental attitude. Stan is a man. Stan is a really, really mental tough player when he goes to these Grand Slam finals because you cannot be weak mentally if you play four Grand Slam finals and win three of them, and you win three of them against the against one of the one of the greatest tennis players of all time, Nadal and Djokovic. He has defeated two of the Grand Slam finals, Djokovic and one of them, Nadal. Yeah, I know Nadal got hurt after the first set, but not. But Stan was the last man standing. He won. So you cannot say that he didn't want deservedly. He won deservedly that match against Nadal. Nadal, bad luck for him. Nadal maybe would have defeated Stan if he was totally healthy. I know I, I don't have any doubt about that, but Nadal was not totally healthy after that first set in that Australian final 2014. So Stan matches up great with with Novak Djokovic mentally when he faces him. He is not afraid. He knows that he can beat him. Uh, Stan is, a, is a, that kind of player who is less afraid of Novak Djokovic than what Ro Roger is. I think that Roger is more afraid of Djokovic. But because, of the, because of the results are showing that, guys, uh, R Roger Federer has, has defeated Novak Djokovic only one time in a Grand Slam final. Only one time. And it was 12 years ago when Novak was 20 years old, like in that 2007 US Open final. And Novak has defeated... Uh, uh, Roger in Grand Slam Finals four times, so Stan is a, he is a mentally tougher against Djokovic what Roger Federer is in these Grand Slam Finals, in my opinion. Because I have proof and I have arguments, and you know me guys, I always prove, I always speak with proof and arguments. And uh, that is the third, uh, that is the third, that is the main things why I believe that uh, Stan Wawrinka matches up so well with Novak Djokovic because uh, of these four things that's, that uh, Novak Djokovic has uh, as his big strength in his tennis resume and that Wawrinka has those four as well but not as good as Djokovic of course but he matches up well and that th this is the first reason that the second reason is that this is a part of, of that because I've seen all these three matches not th that they have faced each other in these Grand Slams 14 court, uh, uh, Oslo Open 2014 in that fourth round, French Open 2015 in final, US Open 2016 in final. That 2014 Oslo uh, Open, that was a big battle, so that match could go either way, of course. Th that is not so much I can really say about that. That could that match could have gone either way. It went Stan Wawrinka's way. Just one early, just one year earlier in 2013, it went it went uh, Novak Djokovic's way. In a five-set battle as well, and I think in the, in the 2013 clash in Australian Open, Novak won that fifth set 10-8, if I'm not mistaken. So that was about the 2014 match. I have not so much to say, but 2015 French Open final and 2016 US Open final, that was uh, bad tactical matches from Djokovic against Stavrinka. I have to say because man. Djokovic won the first set both in French Open 2015 and both in and in US Open 2016. But Djokovic just went. If I have to say one weakness that Djokovic has in his resume, he doesn't have many weaknesses, guys. He doesn't really have many weaknesses. But, but if I have to say one weakness, if I have to choose one weakness that Djokovic has, it has to be that time to time, sometimes he can get passive when he plays this 
uh, tennis matches, like we saw against the Dominic team earlier this year in French Open as well. Yeah, I know the, the conditions was was not the greatest conditions, but uh, he gets passive. He get and he in the French Open final and in 2015 and in the and, and in the US Open 2016, uh, uh, both these matches against Van Vliet. Djokovic was passive after he won those first set. He he tries to defeat a player like like Wawrinka by 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 waiting Wawrinka to make unforced errors. And when Wawrinka is on those finals, he will not make so many unforced errors. He really won't because he has found his rhythm. He has found his groove. He will go for his shots, and that's why he has defeated Novak Djokovic because Novak Djokovic has played passive, passively against Wawrinka. Because, let's face it, all these three matches that v Djokovic has lost in Grand Slams against, v against Wawrinka, Djokovic has, has played, has been going in in these matches like the overwhelming favorite. Let's face it, guys. It's not many players who believe that Wawrinka would defeat Djokovic in, in Arsenal Open 2014, French Open 15, and US Open 16. Because Novak was the over, overwhelming favorite. He was the superior world number one in all these three clashes. But he had, the 2014 Arsenal Open, like I said, not so much to say about that. That match, Novak did a great match, really. And Stan as well. That was one of the best matches that year in the whole season, 2014. But 2015 French Open, 2016 US Open, it was bad tactical matches from Novak Djokovic. Novak Djokovic really shouldn't have lost those matches against Wawrinka. All respect to Wawrinka, but Djokovic helped him there. I've seen both of, the, both, both of the matches, guys. And even when Djokovic, even when Wawrinka was win, winning those sets, I saw a couple of highlights yesterday. Djokovic was giving away those breaks. It was not necessary that superb, superb things that Wawrinka did. Djokovic was just giving away those crucial breaks, both in the third, both both in the second and third and fourth sets, in both meetings. Basically, guys, after the first set that Djokovic won against uh, Wawrinka in French Open and US Open, he just started playing tennis, guys. He just, he just, he just was waiting for unforced errors for Wawrinka to do. And even, even Boris Becker said that after that French Open final 2015, he said that you cannot win French Open finals or Grand Slam finals by being passive. Even his own coach said that. Djokovic was passive. And you cannot be passive against a great shot maker like Wawrinka that deep in a tournament like like Grand Slam Finals. You cannot be... What did Rafa Nadal do with Stan Wawrinka in that French Open 2017 final? What did he do? He just destroyed Wawrinka in straight sets. He completely destroyed him. Why? Because Nadal is... Nadal is... He's more shot maker than Djokovic. He doesn't wait for... Wawrinka. He has so much respect for Wawrinka. He knows what Wawrinka can do with his heavy ground strokes, he didn't allow Wawrinka to hit those heavy ground strokes because, Wawrinka, because it was Nadal who was dictating the match all the time. It was Nadal who was going for winners all the time. It was Nadal who was playing aggressive all the time. And in the end, Nadal was victorious in three straight sets. Djokovic, French Open 2015, US Open 2016, both those finals against Wawrinka, not the aggressive player. So, the reason why Djokovic has so much difficulties against Stan Wawrinka, especially in slams, because it is only 4-3 four, four, to Djokovic in the head-to-head -head in the Grand Slams, and, and even those victories that Djokovic has against Wawrinka, three of them has been all five sets battles. It is about the four reasons that I mentioned before in this video that Djokovic, that Djokovic has and do tremendous good, and that Wawrinka also has, and um, and um, can match up with Djokovic so good with, with those four ability, abilities. And the second reason, this is maybe the most important reason, guys, to be quite honest, is that Djokovic has done bad tactical matches against Wawrinka in both, especially in both of those finals, French Open final and US Open final. And, that, and, he, has, and he has paid the price for that, guys, because, because let's face it, Djokovic is, in the end of the day, a much better player than Stan Wawrinka. He really is. If somebody says that he isn't, then that those, those dudes doesn't know much about tennis. He is a better tennis player. And he, has, he won the first set. He even won, actually, the first set in that Astral Open 2014 match uh, in the fourth round, I believe. 
fourth or quarter final, something like that. He even won that that uh, the first set in that match as well. But that match, like I said, is not so much to say. Vavrinka was playing amazing in tennis. Not that he didn't do in French Open and US Open, but those in French Open and US Open, Djokovic helped him to play that amazing tennis by being passive. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and bye-bye.